Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Discord bot tutorial. In this video, we're going to be creating a way for our users in Discord to buy items. So each profile is going to have an amount of gold or whatever currency you want to use. And then the items will have a price. When you try and buy an item using a command, if you have enough for it, then it'll actually buy it. It'll subtract the gold from your profile and then it'll add the item to your profile effectively so that you can then do the profile command and see what items you have or what items other users have. Okay, let's get into it. So this video is going to be split up into three parts. Part one will be updating our database model so that items have a price, players have a currency, and so on and so forth. Step two will be making the changes we need in the services and in the actual commands. We'll be making those adjustments. There's actually some things I need to go over from last episode that we need to fix because I accidentally broke some stuff. I'm not sure if any of you guys noticed it, but anyway, I'll be going over that. And then for step three, we'll actually be testing it over in Discord. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. Okay, so step one, the first thing we need to do is create a new table called the profile item table, which is the link between profiles and items. Currently, there's no extra data other than that, just two foreign keys to different tables, as well as its own ID in its own table. Um, that ID is in the entity base class. And the reason we have this is to, as I said, link items to profiles, because we have items in one table, profiles in another, and the profiles you know, need to store effectively all the items they have. But there's no way in the profile table really to you know store a list of all of the items they have as ids you can't like store lists so the alternative is you have a middle table that stores all the links between profiles and items so every time you add an item to someone's profile you actually create a new instance in this table instead and you set the profile id to be the person who's got the item and the item id to be the item itself now you've got this link you can actually if you want from an item find out all the people who have the item so that's another thing you might need to, or might want to do but for now we're just doing it one way so the way to actually implement this once we've made this class is to go over to uh item over here so if we actually go over to item we're going to add price just remember to do that if we go over to profile you want to add this too you want to add uh, a list of profile items the thing we just made so this means that when we try and include this in a query what it actually does is it says, okay, go to the profile item table uh, for this profile and get us all of the um, items with our ID. So get us all the items that belong to us, right? Because it knows what the profile ID actually is because over here in the profile, we actually have the ID in here, the uh, primary key. It uses the primary key to compare against that. So the other thing we need to do is go over to the RPG context and we need to add a new DB set. So we're gonna have a public DB set of um, what they, what's it called again? Profile items. Profile item. Okay. Profile items. And we'll just say get set. Now we've got that. Uh, we can close that. And we need to now run our migrations. Oh, actually, if you haven't uh, already added gold as well to the profile, that's something else we need. So. I'll actually run the migration, or I'll show you the command actually. So this is what we have over here. We, um, if you haven't done this, you need to go to your console. We've done this plenty of times in previous videos, so I don't want to go over it every time. We're adding a new migration, and it's I've called it added inventory and gold. You know, whatever you want to call it. So we add that migration, and we get this. So we're adding a column for gold in the profiles. We're adding a column for price in items. And we're creating a new table, profile item, and it says here, you know. It has an ID and a profile ID and item ID, whatever. I, if it looks like this, if it looks like this, then I'm sure you've done it right, okay? Once you've done it, then run the actual migration by using uh, .NET database update, which I probably have somewhere here on my history. There it is. Uh, database update, added inventory in gold. And finally, once you've done that, we can actually start doing the rest of the logic. Okay, step two, we'll be going through some of our services and commands and making some slight adjustments. So if we go to the profile service first and we head down to our constructor, I've got some code here that I want you to only run once and once you've run it once, then remove it. What it does is, as you can see here, it gets all the profiles from the database. It sets all their gold to 100, updates it and saves, okay? Once you've done that, because the problem is all our current profiles in the database have zero gold and I mean, at least in my example, I want to actually, you know, initialize people of 100 gold. So whenever new profiles are made, if you look down here, I've added gold. I'll go to that in a minute. But for everyone currently in the database, there are no gold. So we want to set everyone to 100 just for when we start. But once you've run that once, then just delete it, okay? I've already run it on mine, so I can delete it. Then when we create a profile, there's two changes. One, uh, the first one down here, we actually add gold, right? So I'm saying when we make a new profile, set the gold to 100, okay? When someone makes a new account. 
set goal to 100. Then up here, when we actually go grab a profile, we actually want to include items, okay? Now items is this list here effectively. So it gives you this, but it only gives you the ints because uh, the profiles and items are from other tables. So if you actually want to get, you know, for example, something off the profile, like the, the profile name or, you know, just anything about the profile. If you want to get anything off there, you have to uh, include items and then include items again, and then include the thing you want to include from there. So it's like a tree going down, I guess. <laughs> so we include, oops, did not mean to do that. We include items. Then you notice how I include items dot item. So I'm effectively getting this class loaded so I can now access all this information. Okay, so by doing that, when I grab a profile, I can check all the items and I can read the items names by including items and then including the item on those items. Maybe this should be called profile items or item links rather than items themselves. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. That's all we need to do in this class. Let's move on. So over in the item service, we want to make a new method. We're going to make one for purchasing an item. Now I've made it return a boolean for true or false, whether the item was purchased or not. It's up to you what you return. I don't actually use the boolean in my example. I just thought it'd be kind of useful in case you wanted to send an embed saying, you know, you don't have enough money or whatever you want to do. Uh, yeah, so we need to take in the Discord ID and Guild ID as we do with pretty much everything we do. It's so that we can figure out, you know, who they are from their profile. And then we want to uh, be told the item name of, you know, what item we want to purchase because the person's going to type in, I want to buy shield or basic shield or whatever. And then it's going to go to the database and try to find it. Uh, the next change is we want to inject the profile service, just like how we do over in the experience service. We want it over here too, uh, and then we just simply cache it. Then down here, the first thing is in create new item async on yours. It probably won't have async here because I tried returning the task. Now you can do that normally, but because we made the change where we need to um, be using context, this context here, it's effectively the same as writing it like this, okay? So it means it's in this scope. Now let me fix the formatting. Okay, I've messed up some brackets. The point is it's normally inside these brackets, okay? It should work if I just go put that down there. I'm not quite sure why. I think it's because I have to put brackets around here actually. There you go. Okay, so this is what it normally is, um, which helps you see it's, it's scoped, okay? So everything in here is inside this using. So the problem is if I return the task and await it you know, over in the command, then what actually happens is this context exists no more and it breaks the connection to the database is closed. The connection is only valid in this. So you need to do everything you need to do with the database, uh, you need to do in here. So make it async and await it in here. Uh, but obviously, as it says, you can simplify the using statement. If you just stick it at the front of the function, it keeps it uh, in scope for the rest of the function. And then down here, get item by name. I think it was the same thing. Yeah, we get rid of async and we return await instead of just return. Okay, that's the only difference there. Um, actually, I did have two lower here, but I accidentally removed that. So we can keep that in. That was my bad for removing that. Then we go down to purchase item async. So make an instance of the database. Go get the item. Okay, go get the item by name. Then once you've got the item, uh, we need to say, go get the profile. So at this point, we have the profile for the person and the item. Now, you know, the profile might not exist. Actually, no, it will because we've actually done get or create. So it should exist. You can do an all check if you want. Uh, same with the item, actually. The item definitely might not exist because uh, they might have typed in the wrong name. So I should say if item uh, is null, return false. Okay, so failed to buy the item. Uh, yeah. And then now we say, let's see if they have enough gold. If they don't have enough gold, we also return false. If they do, then we reduce the amount of gold. And then we add a new element to the items list. It's a new profile item where the item ID is the item.id and the profile ID is our profile.id. So this has made a new entry in the new table we had, the profile item table. And it's linking this item to this profile. So if we ever want to get rid of an item, right, we uh, sell it or something, then all we need to do is just remove this. We go find the like link and remove it effectively, okay? So that's that. And then over here, we update it, right? So that's saying, okay, all, all these changes we've made on this profile, update them, and then actually save it to the database and return true because we succeeded in buying the item. So now over in the profile commands, all I've done is I've removed the experience service from here and in the in the constructor. I've removed the experience stuff all from down here because I don't want to level up every single time I type 
question mark profile. Uh, I haven't actually put the XP back anywhere else. It's very easy to do and you can do it wherever you want to grant XP to your users. But for now, I've just taken it out. Uh, so I still say the XP in the level, but I also say uh, gold and I also say items. The problem is what if they don't have any items, you know? So I say, um, now maybe you want something else here if they have no items, I just don't add the field. But I say, as long as they've got some items, then add a field saying items. And all I want to say is all their names separated by commas. So I'm saying basically a yeah, join the string with comma space, you know, so it's like book comma space, sword comma space. And then I say select from the profile items, so from the items, all the item names. So this gets us back uh, an enumerable of string. So that means we can then say, you know, for all those strings, separate them, or sorry, join them with uh, comma spaces. And then that leaves us with, as you can imagine, an embed that says all this stuff. And then it says your items are book, comma, sword, comma, shield, and whatever. That's that's all I have for now to show off the items to other people. But I think it works quite well. You'll have seen it in the intro to this video, and I'll be showing you again when we get it working. And then, um, yeah, we just send the message for the profile embed. So the final thing to do is actually buy items. So if we go over to the item commands and go down, I've made a command for buying an item. And it's literally this. It just takes in the command context and a params string array. So it says basically, uh, put into a string array all of the things they say after the command word. So if your item has multiple um, words, so it might be like great sword as two words maybe or something or whatever you want, then it actually will join them together. So you have it as one string and then we send that string into the purchase function that we wrote earlier in the item service and we buy it. Now I don't you know, say anything afterwards like successfully bought, it's up to you to add that in as embeds and however you want to display it. But at this point, if we finish this, this function and we get to here, it means we've added, or so we've purchased the item, or I've, or we might have failed to purchase it because you know the item name might not exist or something along those lines. The point is, if you put in the right stuff, then you'll have purchased the item and it'll be linked to you in the database. So then, if you do this command and go back to run the profile command, uh, you'll have the item. So let's go give it a test. So for the first time I run the bot now, I've actually uh, got this code here from earlier that I showed. I'm just stepping through it, making sure it's working. As soon as it's done, I'm going to take out the breakpoint and stop the bot, and then I'm going to delete the code. I'm going to run the bot again without the breakpoint and without the extra code. And now I should have 100 gold, as should everyone else in the server, basically. Uh, so if I go back to Discord and do profile, give it a second. I see I have 100 gold, whereas when I tested it a minute ago, I actually had zero gold. So now I want to go buy an item. So if I go buy, uh, I have an item called book, which is 10 gold in the database. So I'm going to go buy book. Okay. And then now I'm going to do profile again. And you'll notice that... Uh, book has been added, but I've actually just realized book doesn't have a price of 10 gold. So I'm actually going to go create a new item. All right, so let's do a question mark, create item. All right, so we'll create an item. What's the item going to be called? It's going to be called um, big book. Why not? All right, big book is going to be about reading and it's got a 100 value. So I should actually run out of money. Okay, when I uh, buy this item. It's been created successfully. Now I only have 100 gold, as I said. So if I go buy big book and then go to profile, yep, I've got book and now I've got big book as well, but I've got no money. So I'll actually have to create a way for um, adding or like changing the price of items. So you guys can do that, I guess. That could be the challenge for you is to make a way to change items. Sorry, I think one thing I didn't mention earlier is I added two extra lines into the uh, create item command, which was, uh, here you go, an int step for price and all it does is it sets the result to the item dot price just an extra two things here to you know ask the user how much they want to uh, put the item up for and i've said the min value is one so they don't make anything that's free though maybe you want something that's free it's up to you yeah i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video the you know project files are on github down below if you want to go check those out feel free to ask any questions down below give any video suggestions in the comments too i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching and goodbye but of course, before we end, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Jason Swearingen, Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Brack, Yoris Letta, Hady Zorko, Rene, Emery Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my patrons down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could go and follow on any of those, go check any of them out. That'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.